Mr. <coughs> Bonjour. I'm uh, Martin Polyakov. I'm a chemist, as you can see from my tie. Um, I'm professor at the University of Nottingham, the home of Robin Hood, Robin de Bois. And I'm, um, I've been Foreign Secretary of the Royal Society for just over two years. And I'm delighted that Jeremy McNeil, the Foreign Secretary of the Royal Society of Canada, is in the audience over there. Perhaps you wave, Jeremy. And um, the Royal Society, I must actually correct our chair, it is not the oldest Academy of Sciences in the world. It is the oldest, now listen carefully, continuously operating National Academy of Sciences. If you put in those extra words, what he said was true. And um, it was founded in 1660. It represents not only scientists in the UK, but also across the British Commonwealth. We have quite a large number of fellows here in Canada, not only in Ottawa, but also in Toronto, Quebec, and also in Calgary, and, I, I, and other cities as well. And um, so my role is as one of the vice presidents and to <coughs> work internationally. Our president is a member of the Committee for Science and Technology that um, David Willits mentioned. And we have been advising the British government for a long time. This year is the 350th anniversary of our first report, which had a Latin name. It was called Silva, which means tree, or is it forest? You, you ought to know, you have a classical education. And it was about the sustainability of British forests. And I think it's quite interesting that even 350 years ago, people were worried about sustainability. In that case, it was whether there would be enough wood for building ships. So it shows already the, um, also the involvement of defense and various other aspects. Um, we um, have a, a science policy center with around 30 people working on it, which part of its role is to provide science-based <coughs> evidence to government for policy making. This is not necessarily to say what policies should be carried out, but to give people like David the information so that he can be informed by science when he makes a decision. So we've had recent reports. He mentioned science as an open enterprise, which was not just about open access, but how we keep the conserve the huge amounts of data that we are collecting for future um, generations. There are wonderful examples. The, the, UK, the King William the Conqueror commissioned a doomsday book in 1086, cataloguing the whole of the UK, which you can still read in the British Library. In 1986, the, Brit, the BBC commissioned a new doomsday book, which was a laser disc and now nobody can read it at all. <laughs> and so this is a problem that is facing us all across science. We had other reports which would be of interest particularly to here in Canada on fracking, but in the UK context. And we have a lot of collaboration internationally. This is particularly my area, not only with the European Union, through a variety of umbrella organizations such as ESAC, the European Academy of Sciences Advisory Council, but also across the world with the Inter-Academy Panel. Jeremy, my Canadian opposite number, is on the um, Council of IAP. And so we try and interact as much as we can because many of the challenges facing us now are global rather than um, national. And at the moment, we're working on reports um, one on cyber security, another one on human resilience to climate change. And the third project, which I think is particularly important, which is called the Vision Project, which is what will education in science, technology, engineering and maths in schools look like in 30 years' time. I don't know what the situation is in Canada, but in the UK, Everybody's worrying about how the exams should be changed in one or two years' time. Nobody's looking 
at what we want, apart from the Royal Society, what we want in 30 years' time, how science education should change. And th that's due to be launched later this year. So finally, what I would like to say is that we work closely with government, but we're independent of it. Uh, and also, <coughs> finally, to point out that through my work on YouTube, I have been amazed by the number of members of public all over the world who are interested in science. And so it is important for scientists to realize that there's much more interest out there from non-scientists in their subject, and I think our minister is a particularly good example of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.